Welcome back to The Daily Grind, everyone. Over the last couple weeks, I've been experimenting with growing that three sisters method, which is basically a guild of three separate crops that you grow together to benefit each other. So the three sisters specifically was kind of made famous with the Native Americans, I believe. I don't know which tribe or anything, or maybe they were all doing it, but basically they started this and figured out that all three of these benefit each other. The first one is corn. So corn is planted first, and you allow that to get a few inches high. Uh, usually they say five to six inches high, and then you plant beans in between. Then after those beans sprout, then you can plant some squash. And so they help each other in a couple ways. So the, the corn acts as a trellis for the beans to climb up and gives them support. The beans are nitrogen fixers, so they're adding nitrogen back into the soil, which is beneficial for the corn and the squash. And then the squash acts as a ground cover, a living ground cover, almost like a mulch, and weaves its way through, covering the, the ground, keeping weeds suppressed, and also helping to keep the soil a little bit cooler in the hot summer. That's what I've been doing here. I'm gonna bring you guys in. I'm gonna show you the process from start to finish and when I started each plant. Let's get to it. I'm gonna do something called the zigzag method. I'm gonna plant them about a foot apart like this and then so it'll be one here, one here, and one there. About a foot apart on one row, we're gonna do a second row. We're gonna stagger them and get them real close together, you know, about six inches back and do that kind of zigzag, you know, thing because corn is pollinated by the wind. It's wind pollinated. If you have rows that are really far apart and the wind's blowing like this direction or this direction, it's gonna blow that pollen away from all the others, even if you have them close together in a row like this. And so having them staggered like that, if the wind's blowing this way, it's gonna pollinate these ones. If the wind's blowing this way, it's gonna pollinate these ones. So having them in a bunch together like that helps get that pollinated a lot better. You have more kernels actually pollinated. You don't get like whole bunch of ears that have no pollinated uh, pieces so and you want them about two inches down so we're at a foot right here make another hole let's see 12 24 always kept on telling you you're gonna need math and they say no no we don't need math we always said that but you do for 90 Six multiplication tables by twelves here. One oh eight. I think, right? Let's come in and we are going to make the staggered. So as you can see, we are doing these are the two holes. Alright, we're doing it at six inch and we're coming in just like we'll have them a little further, just like that. All right. And here are the corn. Two per hole. We're just dropping these in the holes. Super simple. So this is a sweet corn. It's called Stowell's Evergreen Sweet Corn. Last year we tried a popcorn variety and that didn't really do too well. Now if you're planting two different varieties, and they're right next to each other, you gotta make sure you got the timing right because if they both go into bloom at the same time, then they are going to then have issues. You're, you're not gonna get the variety that you want. One ear will have a couple different varieties on you, on, on hand, and, and that's within like a mile. So if there's a farmer, for instance, growing a different type of corn, somewhere close by, it's possible to get a certain, a, a couple of the kernels being pollinated by those and then I'm stuck with you know a different type when I'm trying to grow stowels I might end up getting if they're growing a dent corn I might get dent corn and then it's not not a sweet corn at that point so let's go ahead and cover them all right put a little pressure of course we don't want to step here want to put all of our weight on this but a little bit to compress that soil and make sure that all this every single one of those seeds has soil touching it that way there's no air pockets or something that they're sitting in 
not get germinated. So here we go. Oh, windy today. So we're gonna really heavily water this, make sure it soaks deep. And then I wanna keep this watered every other day or so. It depends on how hot it is. Might have to be every day if it's super hot. So it's been about two or three days since I planted the corn seeds. They're not gonna sprout up yet. It takes seven to 10 days. But I'm gonna pre start preparing the front part of this bed for adding the squash. What I am doing is I'm adding coffee grounds. So I get this free from Starbucks. It's grounds for your garden. And I'm just gonna pour. We're not adding a ton, but you know, fair amount. So this does a couple things. One, it's organic matter, but two, it will acidify the soil slightly, and it's also gonna cause ants to not like this area. I've still got more, which I'm gonna save for some of these beds. Use the rake to kinda disperse this a little more evenly. I'm just gonna go through and just kinda scratch this a little more in. So I planted these corn March 8th, and it is now March 22nd. It's exactly two weeks since I planted the corn. And they say you wanna wait if you're doing the three sisters until the corn is either five to six inches or two to three weeks. So I'm on the low end of the two to three weeks. A couple of these haven't, you know, they're not quite exactly five inches there and they have not reached. Now, if I pull that leaf up like that, I might be able to get it to right about five inches, but that's not what you're measuring. You're measuring what it is total, okay? So we're not quite to five inches, so I probably have to wait a couple more days. Now, the reason why some people might ask, why am I waiting? Uh, why not plant them at the same time? Well, beans are a little more vigorous than the corn. The corn takes a little longer to grow and the beans will just shoot up and grow real quick. So you wanna give the corn a little head start so that way the beans don't overtake it. Um, so as long as you get a little bit of height off of these, then the beans, once they sprout, these should be a good, you know, couple feet tall. It'll give the beans a place, like a pole basically to grasp on and climb up the corn stalk. And then the beans, when they get big and heavy, won't, won't pull over the corn if you do it the right timing. Well, today is March 27th and it's about two and a half, a little over two and a half weeks, maybe two weeks and five days, I think it is exact, since the corn sprouted up. Most of these are over five inches. There's a five inch mark and it's right there actually, it's right at five inches. If you're looking at it not bending over, if you pull these up, then it's like, it's like seven or eight inches, okay? So most of them are that way. You can see that one's over five inches, five and a half inches. So I think we're gonna plant today. This is what I'm planting. It's a pole bean, a Blue Lake pole bean. So there's a green bean, like a snap bean type of thing. You want them about one inch deep. Okay, and it says two to three inches apart. I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna have them one per corn. So I'm, I'm gonna plant them in between the corn and let them figure out which to go up. We're gonna put little holes in the ground, one inch deep, one inch deep right in between each one of these like so. Okay, and we're gonna go down the row, that row, and then we're gonna put a hole in between each one of these rows. So we're alternating just like that. So it'll still, these will get the zigzag as well. So these are the beans. We're gonna take two and put, do you see the little holes that I put next to each corn plant? Mm -hmm. All right, so you're gonna take two of them and put them in each hole. Wow. So two per hole. Or one? Two. These look like candy. Yeah, like little... Candy beans? Jelly beans? Mm -hmm. There's There's some on this side too. Look, I can cover them. Just look, there's one there. You missed. There's a hole there. Need more? Good. Is this one? Uh-huh. Two there. Two on that one. Oh. Two on this one. Oh, you need more? There. Good job. Yeah, we don't want three because we don't have enough beans, I don't think, for all this, so. All right. 
Yep, good job. Yep, you take that out. All right, so we only made it to here, okay? Now we got most of this, but we're missing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We're missing seven holes with beans. We're just gonna go get a different type of bean for here and see which does better. We've got these snow peas. I don't have any other beans. I do, but those are bush beans and that, that defeats the purpose here of them using the corn stalk to climb up. Peas are, are also climbing and they climb quite vigorously. I have a couple of them over in my garden bed and they're really nice, really good tasting. So we'll add these here. Do you want to, you want to come and plant? So we're going to try to do two per hole again. So look, that's the next one. Good. And then two. Good. Here, here's two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The shell can be in there. It's not going to hurt anything. There might be a, in it. There might be a you know, mm. in it. Is there? All right, let's make one more hole. So we can get one more. We'll just use up these seeds. We'll put it right. There. Watch out. And there we go. That's the last two seeds. Backwards. Did it. All right. So do you want to go through and just cover these back up, Abby? Mm -hmm. You sure. start on this side and cover the next one. I'll start on this and we'll meet in the middle. Now, normally I would come through and water this. However, it rained this morning. And so I don't want to overwater my corn. You don't want soppy conditions. So I'm going to wait and water this tomorrow. So the beans and peas, we'll see how they do. we got those in the ground. And next we're going to have to come in and get some squash in here. Now I have some squash already started, but since they're already started, they'll overtake all this before the rest of this has a chance to grow up. So I'll have to actually plant seed here. You can't plant starts. And if you did, if you want to start these inside a little early, you could, uh, but you would have to start them about a week from this point and then plant those in the ground. It, it doesn't make sense. It's better to just plant the stuff in the ground with this technique. So I got the corn in the ground. I waited two to three weeks, two weeks, five days actually, then got the beans in the ground. And then next we'll wait and uh, get the, the squash in the ground about a week from now. Once those beans sprout, then you can get the squash in. This corn has really grown. Look how tall these ones are. Uh, some of the ones in the back are a little, still a little small. Um, they're growing at different heights, but the beans popped up. And so now they're, the beans are here. So either today or tomorrow, I'm gonna plant the squash. It's been about a week, week and a half since I planted the beans. So about time to plant that squash. First, I wanna give this a dose of fertilizer. This is what I always use is the fish fertilizer which is a 511, and I also put the more bloom in there, which is a 01010. So this is got everything that they absolutely need. It has a bunch of micronutrients as well. It's a really good form, but figure in about two more weeks, I'll give fertilizer. And at that point I can fertilize everything, including the squash, because they'll have popped up as well. Let's go ahead and get the seeds. We'll plant some squash. Abby and I are gonna be planting some pumpkin and well, winter squash basically here for the four sisters planting. So if you could hold that, Abby, just hold it. We'll see how long this is, how much we got. So this is a 25 foot thing, uh, the measuring tape. Um, you got it right there. All right, so we got right around 20 feet. That's about what this is. So it is a 20 foot bed. All right, you can let go, hon. Thank you, sweetheart. Oh, come on. And we're gonna start with the Kushal pumpkin. So let's see, had 81% germination rate in 2022. So it's not great, but so we'll get three in there just to ensure that we get something. So. We want to plant these. There's the point. This is more rounded. You put the point down and we want about four inches. 
So I'll get, I'm gonna do two at a time here, but right there at the edge. There we go. And then we're gonna go six feet because I think that's what it calls for, five. There's five foot. We'll probably go five foot because this says five to six foot. So that'll work. We'll do five foot. And get them in. You want to put this last one in? Wait, what? So look, oh, uh-oh. So take this and you take it like this, that point down, and you just push it in with your fingers. And right there, see where that hole is? Yeah, the pointy part down and push it in. Good, good. Good job. All right. So now, well, we're gonna go from that spot. We're gonna do another five foot and we're gonna get something else in here. All right, so let's do the Cinderella pumpkin because the kids will like that. You wanna plant these? Yep. Yeah. This one is five to six feet as well, as well. So, and what is the germination rate? 91% then to 2022. We don't get a whole lot of these seeds, so. Um, but we're only doing one of these, so there we go. So let's make sure we get germination. We'll get three seeds in there. I'm gonna do two, okay? And then you can do the last one, okay? So we'll just take it, stick it in like that, get it down. There we go. Do you want to do the last one? Yeah. Put your finger in like that and then just shove it into the ground. Point it side down. Not with this. Yep. A little further. There we go. All right. Five foot. Let's see what else we got. So let's get a watermelon in here. What do you think? Yeah. So this is a crimson sweet watermelon is the name. And four to six four to six foot apart and that'll work let's get all right hon so we've got we're gonna plant quite a few since we're only putting one of these we got a lot of these seeds do you want to do this one or no all right let me get a couple in and then you can get a couple in i put that in pocket you want to put a couple in okay well let me just hold it take these two and okay, these are too easy. How about yep. plant these before? There we go. Right there. Yeah, I think you and me did together. We planted some seeds. I did it. You did it? Got both of them? So now we have really only we can do it's four foot. So let's see, what is the smallest one that we can get in there? Sweet dumpling winter squash. Because this one requires six feet apart. That's not gonna work. This one is 36 to 60 inches apart. It's plenty. All right, so that'll work. Gonna get quite a few of these seeds. We're gonna plant too many and then we can thin it out. I just wanna make sure we get them. Apparently you can plant pretty much any squash, uh, even watermelon works, um, any kind of vining squash. Pointy seeds? Mm-hmm. I knew more pointy seeds. Are them really? Oh. Yep. All right, okay. there we go. So they're in. Now we gotta water. Make sure those seeds start their germination process here. Yeah. Watch out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, right now you need my help, right? Mm -hmm. But the more you learn, oh, then you're gonna be able to do it yourself soon. Yeah. So today is April fourth. So we can keep track of how long it takes for these to pop up. So you can see the timing between planting the corn and then the beans and then the squash. Now, I probably could have planted the squash yesterday because those beans popped up. Uh, in all honesty, I probably should have waited on the beans another couple days with the corn. They were still a little small and they still are small. Kind of worries me. Um, I'm afraid that they won't get tall enough and big enough and robust enough to not get knocked over by those beans going up them but we'll see how this works but you guys can see the timing i'm using here and you know adjust accordingly to your needs well look how big these corn have gotten 
they are growing really well. They're probably a foot and a half tall already. But it's really funny. This side is all really tall. And then you can see it just kind of dips down right here. So these are all tall. And then boom, this dips down. It's all the same variety of corn, so there's no difference there. I just don't, I don't know what's going on over here. Now it could be that this was getting too much sun and dried it out. That's possible because here I was growing some wheat, which I've recently harvested, but I haven't harvested the oats here because they're not ready. But the wheat and the barley, I harvested all this. By the way, I've got a video coming up soon on how I did that. So stay tuned for that one, guys. But... I have a feeling that maybe when the sun was coming in, because the sun comes up over like this, in the mornings, this would dry out a little faster than here. So maybe this stayed moist a little longer. I'm not sure, but you would think that the extra sun would help grow these faster. So I really can't figure this out. If you guys know, if you guys can figure this out, have some suggestions, please let me know. Because I mean, this is all the same soil and I tilled all this the same way. But anyway, so, the corn's grown really well. We don't quite have tassels yet, of course. Uh, they're not they're not that big, but they've been growing really well. I've been adding a whole lot of nitrogen fertilizer in the form of fish plant food to this. So the emulsified fish is working really well to kind of grow these because I, you know, they're heavy feeders, so they need a lot of nitrogen-rich fertilizers. Um, they need everything really, uh, especially nitrogen to be able to grow. They are a grass after all. And then the beans are doing really well. We're starting to see these starting to run a little bit. We've got some runners starting. So pretty soon those beans will grow up really well. And then it took a while, guys, but these sprouted first. These are the squash. So I've got a couple different squashes in here. You guys saw earlier what they were. But the squashes, this, this squash came up first. I haven't thinned it out fully yet. I did thin out a couple of them, but I wanted to make sure in case a bug came in and ate one that I've at least got one in this spot so I'm going to leave them for a little bit longer until they get strong enough where I know that they should be good. So I've got one there and then finally I actually had to plant new seed here because they never came up but here's the watermelon finally came up so these are a little bit behind the rest. Nowhere else did the watermelon come up. By the way I got to come through and weed some of this okay but the watermelon finally popped up. This is the pumpkin and this is probably growing the best right now. I mean, it's getting big. Um, it's actually got the third set of leaves, even though this was not the first to pop up. Those down there were, but those only have second set of leaves. So this is doing really well. And then down here is a kusha. Um, I, th I believe that's how you pronounce it. But this is doing really well also. Uh, this kusha is uh, growing quite well here. Now I planted another kusha here. A set of seeds and those never sprouted right around this area and then I came through the same time I planted the new set of seeds for the watermelon that had uh, finally popped up but this kusha didn't I don't know what's going on they're they're kind of slow so we'll see what happens here if we ever get one of these to pop up we might have a big hole in our squash row here but that's okay I mean squash get really big and this is a pumpkin so that's gonna vine out real far and same with that so if we never get these to pop up i think we'll be all right we'll still have good coverage and mulch living mulch here um, i will come through and weed some of these areas uh, before this squash really starts taking over and then once they do uh, it should suppress the weeds quite well i did also add some mulch hardwood bark mulch around the corn in hopes to keep the moisture in because we were getting really hot days. Now today is kind of cool, it's cloudy, and it's about 78 degrees right now, but we were hitting 90, 95 degrees already. And this is not even summer yet, this is spring. And it was drying out really quick, and I was having to come and water every day, and I didn't want to do that. So I added some mulch to be able to kind of keep that moisture in a little bit before the squash kind of takes off and covers everything and then the peas if you guys remember i didn't have enough of the beans here peas are growing actually really fast here you can see how big they're getting and so 
we'll see hopefully i mean i probably should have put the peas on that side because these might take over the corn and outgrow them so we'll see what happens right over here we'll have to keep an eye on that i probably should have waited for the peas because those really do grow very fast once they establish they just take off so i always like to show the date here it is thursday april 25th and these squash have been up for a couple weeks actually um, the ones that popped up originally these when I reseeded they popped up about four days ago so this does take a while to get everything established and luckily here we have a really long growing season I mean we've got until probably November till we get a frost but if you live in a climate where your summers your you know, your frosts are late and then also start early and you don't have enough time this might not be the method for you but if you can start this early like right in the beginning start the corn right in the beginning of your growing season right as the soil temperatures reach the temperature that they have to be to be able to plant the corn you want to start this early that's that's your best bet here is to be able to get this going early because it does take a while you got to wait two to three weeks and for me it was three weeks before that corn got tall enough before I could put the beans in and then I had to wait for the beans to sprout before I could put in the squash so we're talking maybe a month month and a half from when you plant the corn to where you can till when you can plant the squash just keep that in mind guys if you're going to do this I will keep you guys updated and show you kind of what's going on in the next couple weeks to months and of course I'll bring you guys back when I harvest everything of course I'll be giving you updates periodically as these grow I'm pretty excited about this to see really kind of the benefit see if I do gain more yield from the corn and all this kind of works together to kind of help benefit each other because I see mixed uh, feelings about this online where some people say don't do it okay it's, it doesn't help and it becomes more complicated than it needs to be and then other people say it's wonderful and it really does they do help each other so I'm interested to see how it's going to work for me and you guys can come along and see you know if it's working for me it might work for you so keep watching the next couple months guys as I said I'm going to come out with videos uh, periodically and show you updates on these so if you guys like this kind of content please subscribe and hit that bell notification for future video updates also if you guys could hit the like button it would really help me and the channel out I will see you guys on the next video now you escape the daily grind